Appearing in 1920s post-Germany, German Expressionism is one of the earliest cinematic movements to come based in style and mood, which would later inspire other film movements, proving its global impact. Majorly because of the movement's appearance at a time where German society remained in depression because of the loss of World War I, the elements associated with German Expressionism portray the exaggerated distortion of reality and include unique angles, extreme dark lighting and mise-en-scene as they reflect on the country's state at a time. By rejecting cinematic realism, expressionism films showcase dramatic, revolutionary interpretations of the human condition, after experiencing the horrors of the war. Influence on this particular style conventions can be analyzed in two modern films, the 1991 American film by Tim Burton, Edward Scissorhands, and the 2006 Mexican film by Guillermo del Toro, Pan's Labyrinth. Hence, the aim of this project is to examine German expressionism style in contrasting cultural context as a reflection of social conflict. I believe these films to be appropriate for this discussion as both are stylistically similar in their use of characteristics to the movement dark mise en scene and cinematography elements that support the fantasy narratives exploring alienation. The Burns film tells the story of Edward Scissorhands, an artificial and finished human-like creation that has scissors instead of arms. After being discovered by a suburban citizen, Peck, and brought into the suburbia, Edward falls in love with a human girl, Kim. However, he ends up experiencing the appearance-based judgment from other townspeople. Portraying his personal experiences in this fantasy format, Burton creates an intelligent allegory for suburban America, basing the film on how he felt like an outcast growing up. Similarly, the harsh Spanish Civil War setting causes the protagonist of Pan's Labyrinth to search for distractions from her cruel reality. Moving with her pregnant mother to a military base, Ophelia meets her sadistic stepfather, the captain. Living in this traumatizing reality, Ophelia discovers a phone in a labyrinth who tells her that she is a lost princess and has to go through trials. Mainly, Del Toro claims to have been inspired by the 9-11 attacks cruelty for the picture that explains Ophelia's need to enter her own magical world. Contributing to the fantasy genre, which originated from German Expressionism, the dark mise en scene is present in both Edward Scissorhands and Pan's Labyrinth, which allows both directors to explore alienation critically. In Burton's case, the fantasy mise en scene elements establish the fairy tale like atmosphere of the film, as supported by the age restriction 12, showing how it is designed for children as well. First, introducing German Expressionism elements to the viewer, the director creates a visual juxtaposition between the suburban town and Edward's castle. As a part of the exposition, the color differences seen in a long shot foreshadow the social conflict of the film, as supported by the bright colors and major chorded soundtrack that make the overall look more whimsical. Like this, through this exaggeration, Burton implements dark elements to portray the alienation Edward experiences visually. The juxtaposition draws attention to the darkness of Edward's castle, creating the friction between those two aesthetics within a single frame, as stated by the production designer Welch. Similar to how German Expressionism was focused on human emotions, the exaggerated whimsical colors can be justified because that's how it would look to an outsider like Edward feels different. In this sense, Burton's experiences growing up as a dark individual in suburban California were at the basis of the story's setting, and were enriched by the addition of German Expressionism elements. Supporting the major critique of suburbia during the Reagan era, the dark mise en scene elements were utilized by Burton to portray his own alienation from the society. Likewise, impacted by the 9-11 attack, Del Toro created Pan's Labyrinth to explore human cruelty. Ophelia's need to enter her own fantasy can mirror the post-9-11 fascination with Hollywood films that show heroic and distinctly American superheroes overcome evil enemies as a coping mechanism. While the protagonist in Pan's Labyrinth is essentially a child, the film's age restriction is 16+, and covers violent moments that are not intended for children. Contrasting with Burton's whimsical set design, Del Toro utilizes magical realism as Pan's Labyrinth attempts to distinguish between what is real and not. The scene when Ophelia runs away to first meet the fawn uncovers how the girl feels alienated in her own reality, merging with the labyrinth's darkness. In Pan's Labyrinth, the labyrinth and its creatures are associated with German Expressionism, which is supported through the only source of lighting in the scene being from the moon, that establishes a spooky atmosphere alongside the dark set design. The long shot during Fawn's conversation with Ophelia establishes the two as equal, making the monster less scary for the girl as compared to her stepfather. From the start, German Expressionism elements are given a positive connotation for Ophelia, seeking distractions from her cruel reality as affected by the Spanish Civil War setting, as the scene where the girl first enters the labyrinth happens after Captain shows his cruelty to the rebels. Similar to how Edward is a reflection of Tim Burton himself, Del Toro stated, I think the girl very much reflects the way I was when I was a kid. In this sense, while Burton's film is more whimsical and Del Toro's picture is more realistically brutal, both directors utilize German expressionism as unseen elements to portray the protagonist's alienation that can be traced to their personal experiences as well as reactions with suburban America and the 9-11 attack, respectively. Both Fawn and Edward resemble famous German Expressionist monster characters from Nosferatu, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, and Frankenstein. 
through the use of makeup and acting within mise-en-scene. For example, the font's slow movements are compared to Nosferatu, and Edward's alienation like the one of the Wien's monster, Cesar. Further differences between Edward Scissorhands and Pan's Labyrinth's homage to German Expressionism can be seen in how the two directors utilize their characteristic cinematography elements, especially in their respective treatments of death. The moment after Edward pushes Jim from the window is shown from a high Dutch angle, drawing less attention to the death itself, but rather the director's intention to keep Edward human in the eyes of the viewers, and thus a victim of alienation, as well as not to make the film unnecessarily brutal. Because Edward is victimized while looking like a monster, Burton contradicts the typical fantasy narrative conventions, seen in German Expressionism as well. By showing Jim as harmful to Edward, with whom the audiences truly emphasizes, the director criticizes the importance of the appearances within the suburbia. Making his protagonist alienated, Burton creates a real suburban fantasy that highlights socio-political issues of classicism and institutional segregation, by which he himself was affected growing up. Because Del Toro and Burton's messages are different, despite similar stylistic choices used, Ophelia's death is largely emphasized with the use of close-up shots. The much more realistic blood compared to Edward Scissorhands is clearly identifiable and thus makes the film harder to watch, as supported by a variety of violent scenes prior to this. Slowly zooming in on blood on Ophelia's hand, Del Toro gives viewers time to reflect on why the girl needed a destruction in the first place, due to her and Del Toro's social conflicts with their realities. Del Toro states that Ophelia is the only character in the film who does not enact any violence, victimizing her to make her a martyr of the cruel system. Reinforcing Ophelia's role of a victim, it is revealed that Ophelia has the blood of the innocent when she enters the kingdom. Del Toro associated her with innocence in naivete, which is utilized to create a recognizable line of what is good and evil. In addition, Ophelia's death is present at the very start of the picture, setting up the tone for the directorial critique. With the tension full soundtrack combined with Ophelia's breath, from the start Del Toro makes the film more brutal, unlike Burton's fairy tale. The German expressionism elements in both films are extremely dark, as Burton and Del Toro place their critiques on their realities by establishing the society, suburbia and fascist camp as the cruel villains pushing the protagonists to extremes. In the finales, both Edward and Ophelia find peace, but not within their societies, they come off as reflections of Burton and Del Toro's realities, social conflicts of which are criticized. Further exploring how the main alienation tropes in the two films were enriched by German expressionism elements, the camera angle functions to portray the protagonist's feelings. Establishing how visibly different Edward is from suburban citizens, the use of camera angles in the scene where Peg first brings the protagonist home show Edward's reactions from an outsider's point of view. The uncomfortability the character experiences can be seen in the bed frame taking space at the top of the shot, as well as the low angle utilized when Edward pierces the mattress. Contrasting to the large amount of negative space in the castle, the cluster egg composition in this room was created to portray how much Edward does not fit in, as it physically seems like there is not enough room for him. Correspondingly to Burton's use of low angle to show how the protagonist is uncomfortable, in Pan's Labyrinth, when Ophelia first meets her stepfather, the low angle, or Ophelia's point of view, is utilized to engage the audience with the narrative as it establishes the power dynamics. As the girl is shyly extending her arm to the captain, it is clear that she is uncomfortable and scared for the angle, forcing by him grabbing her arm. When the captain responds to the girl, there is a pedestal shot showing how she, he is physically bigger than her. While visually this scene lacks dark German expressionism elements, the attention to emotions at the core of the movement represents it. A scene in these film elements showing the girl is inferior from the very start, Ophelia does not belong in the base, causing her to search for distraction. How peculiar angles are utilized to portray emotions is a characteristic of German expressionism, which both Burton and Del Toro used to portray alienation in their respective protagonists. Combined with dark mise-en-scene elements, the peculiar camera angles function to support the alienation trope, that is the foundation of both Edward Scissorhands and Pan's Labyrinth, due to their respective directors' interactions with their societies, explaining the social conflicts present on the screen. All things considered, homage to German Expressionism can be traced in Edward Scissorhands and Pan's Labyrinth, as both Burden and Del Toro utilize darkness and scene and peculiar camera angles to explore the theme of alienation within the fantasy genre, similar to their personal experiences. Both directors thought it to be fitting to use the movement's characteristic elements, even though in both films these dark elements do not carry a negative connotation, unlike the monsters of German Expressionism era, showing the evolution. Burden's fantasy world is a critique on class system of the Regan's era, and Del Toro's magic realism is an escape from cruelty of both Spanish Civil War and 9-11. This notion of cruel alienation is a major theme present in both films discussed and directly correlates to post-World War cruelty that promote German expressionism. Alongside with characteristic to the movement costumes, Edward Scissorhands and Pan's Labyrinth are heavily based on emotions, which correlates to the movement discussed, even if they have different influences. To this day, German Expressionism stylistic conventions are proving to be universally applicable, as throughout history there are moments where humans' negative emotions need to be portrayed visually. 
similar to how Edward Scissorhands in Pan's Labyrinth utilized it to portray social conflict.